You live in a city, you've got a family and an active lifestyle, but an SUV doesn't fit your image? Well, you're probably in a pretty narrow target group, but fortunately there is something even for you, and that something is the Opel Insignia Country Tourer. Opel Insignia Country Tourer, together with the Volkswagen Passat Alltrack, Peugeot 508 RXH and Citroën C5 Cross Tourer, is a family estate car with all-wheel drive, slightly raised suspension and plastic protection panels, which make the car look cool, but you don't want to know how much they cost to replace. The boot is 540 liters, it opens automatically as you can see, and uh, well it's not as big uh, in, as in the uh, new Ford Mondeo or the uh, Peugeot 508 estate. There is this big sort of loading step here, but Opel has thought about it and has given us a sliding boot floor, which seems like a clever idea, but first of all it doesn't lock in place. There's a button here, but I don't know how it works, so it doesn't lock in place. At the moment it should, it's probably broken, because everybody tried it and everybody tried the next step, uh, all the car journals, and they all got lost. Because you get to this point and you think, is there a button to actually drop it? No, there is no button, there is actually a chapter about it in the user guide, and the chapter in the user guide tells you to put your fingers underneath there, close these little trolley pulley wheel thingies and uh, hmm <laughs> and now i'm stuck <laughs> ah, yeah. don't let your kids do that this car has got keyless entry and uh, it lets me know that i opened the door thank you maybe it's in case my kids open the door or something anyway um in the back it's not as spacious as uh, in the competitor as with the competitors, but there's still a decent amount of uh, legroom and headroom. Uh, and uh, there's also a 230 volt socket, which is good news because if your kids are playing some video games in the back here, you don't have to buy an expensive car charger, you can just plug in your uh, regular, regular home plug. Besides all-wheel drive and protective panels, we should not forget that this is a facelifted insignia. Probably something changed on the outside, but the main changes are in the cockpit. In the middle, there's this uh, new touchpad thing, and this touchpad thing gives me some haptic feedback, which is nice, but not really necessary, because the whole touchpad is unnecessary. Why is it unnecessary? Well, that's because uh, all its functions uh, I, can, uh, I can do with my fingers on this touch screen, which is much more convenient and uh, easier than uh, fiddling with, uh, with this. Of course, I can scribble letters here, but why would I bother if I have a QWERTY keyboard here? So that's, again, easier to, um, to write that way. Uh, what's more, the system is not uh, very responsive and uh, it's not very good at recognizing my scribbles. The satnav itself could also use a refresh. The system is unintuitive despite the touchscreen. Uh, too often I exit a menu instead of pressing enter. For example, you write something and then you expect that enter is here, but uh, this is actually the close button. So you have to write everything again and then the enter is on the on the uh, other side. The system as a whole is generally also very slow to respond. And speaking of slow response, uh, so are these, um, well, touch buttons for, uh, for climate control, for heated seats and for uh, ventilated seats. Yes, this car is loaded. I could use some haptic uh, feedback here, but I don't have any, so whenever I press them, I don't know if I press the right button, I don't know whether I change the setting I want, so instead of having my eyes on the road, I keep looking at these little touch screens here. Not very good, not very good at all. There is also no place to put your mobile phone. I know you should, or rather must, stow it away safely. But I bet many of you, just like me, like to have it somewhere within easy reach. So for the time being, I put it in the cup holders. Okay, so let's stow it away safely. Uh, there's a little storage compartment here. 
under the armrest and as you can see it's not very convenient to actually get there because when I open it I have to do things with my hand so anyway mm, I already have my glass case here so that takes a lot of space and if I put my phone here it leaves very little space for for example for cables because there is there are two USB ports and a three and a half millimeter jack socket here so if I were to connect some cables here uh, I don't think I would be able to close this storage in front of me this is the top spec version and the top spec version comes with uh, a wide screen digital display I've got analog ref counter analog uh, water temperature gauge and analog fuel gauge the rest is digital it's a wide screen and it shows me well different readings uh, in different ways depending on the mode I'm driving it whether it's uh, sport touring normal uh, anyway, all this information is presented very clearly and it's very easy to operate. Um, this car comes with um, active cruise control, so I can operate the active cruise control and the phone with my left thumb and uh, I can operate the, um, the onboard computer and the radio with my right thumb. Very convenient and Opel has done really a great job with this, not with the satnav. When going for an Opel Insignia, you have many engines to choose from. There are petrols and diesels, ranging from 140 to 325 horsepower, and from 1.4 to 2.8 liters. Top of the range is reserved for the sporty OPC model, which costs around 50,000 euros. In the Cross Tour, you get to choose between petrol and diesel engines from 170 to 250 horsepower, between 1.6 and 2 liters. Under the bonnet here is the most powerful 2-liter 195 horsepower diesel with 400 newton meters of torque. This engine propels the Insignia Country Tour from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in a breathtaking, well, not so breathtaking, 9.9 .9 seconds. You expected a better time, didn't you? Well, so did I. And then I saw how much this car weighs it's close to two tons which explains a lot it explains why it rolls heavily in the corners it explains why it dives on braking and it also explains why it thinks that I'm gonna hit a barrier yeah that's one of the uh, prevention collision prevention systems yeah uh, the additional weight in this car also explains why this car is not very economical when uh, when traveling even on long journeys uh, i've done about uh, 500 kilometers in this car so far along motorways and along back roads and uh, eight liters per 100 kilometers is the best i got well two tons and uh, you know you have to get these two tons moving okay so then there's the sluggish gearbox automatic gearbox uh, it doesn't like shifting gears and this car doesn't like to accelerate heavily and by the way on motorway it also lacks power at motorway speeds uh, you're doing 120 130 you want to change lane overtake and it just takes a lot of effort for this uh, engine to actually get the car going faster but there must be something good about the Opel Insignia Country Tour and yes there is on the motorway it's relatively quiet and it's very comfortable so uh, I'm actually looking forward to the next uh, five or six hundred kilometers which I have to do today before I get home and there is also the all-wheel drive system uh, which means the car has better grip especially on these uh, twisty mountain roads I'm uh, driving along right now and uh, yeah speaking of all-wheel drive I wonder whether this car can drive through some rougher terrain let's see the truth is there is only up to two centimeters difference in ride height between the standard insignia and the country tour so you won't get much further up the road you just may have to walk back further to get someone with a tractor to help you out Prices of the Opel Insignia Country Tour start at around 31,000 euros, which is close to the top spec estate version with the same engine. The Insignia Country Tour also comes as a front wheel drive car, which makes it cheaper, lighter and more efficient. But at the same time, it still looks beefed up. The question is how long it'll take your neighbor to spot that it doesn't have the 4x4 badge on the boot. 
If you're not convinced by the Opel Insignia Country Tour, watch more of my reviews by clicking here and also subscribe to my channel. New reviews every Friday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.